common sense. It's common sense, isn't it? It must be right. Let me try and prove to you that all this common sense about studying things is just availability bias. Dressed up, dressed up like wisdom. Wisdom probably looks something like Merlin, doesn't it? Yeah? I mean, again, that's a bias, but it doesn't matter. But common sense is probably just availability bias dressed up as Merlin or wisdom. We'll call it wisdom. Now, we see a lot of study advice on YouTube, yeah? And a lot of it gets a lot of attention because people want to learn. And that is their right, as somebody said to me. I have a right to learn. I have a right to memorise. God damn you. As long as you know the difference between the two. Oh. And a lot of this advice. Let's take, for example, something old. Um, is it Justin Sun? He said on his channel. He said something like this. Should we, should we be studying more? And sleeping less. And he said something like reason. Reason tells us that we should. And you also see a lot of people on YouTube making videos. And they say things like, oh, uh, eight hours sleep. Completely overrated. Completely overrated. It's just a fallacy. But where do they get that information from? Where do they get that information from? Well, they're not getting it from experts. Because I have spent the last week... That is how, that is how eager to be right I am. No, <laughs> that would be confirmation bias. That is how eager I am to get to the truth. I have spent the last week looking at what experts say. This is people who actually study sleep. Huh? What do I, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a couple of videos in the link below. Which are done by people who actually spend time studying sleep. And it is not right that you can just go by on a little sleep. And it is not right that that won't affect your learning. People who are tired make... Well, let's say like this. this is what one of the experts said. He said this in the video, which is about his book. He said this. He said, we think that sleeping is doing nothing. We have a bias towards doing things that are hard, being more productive. Now, that might sound common sense to you, that that is obviously true. But what is common sense is all the information that's been available to us. And all the information that's available to us is that you cannot, you cannot in any way ever be hard work. Which just happens to be what benefits people who run companies and have lots of money. Because apparently you do need to sleep. And that what happens when you're sleeping... And apparently this isn't, you, you can distinguish non-REM sleep from REM sleep. You do need REM sleep. People seem to get it much later. So teenagers apparently get their REM sleep. Oh no, I've got confused about that bit, so I won't comment. So, but in this non-REM sleep, you do need REM sleep. In this, which is the, my understanding is it's the less deep sleep. You your brain makes a lot of the connections. So whilst we've said so you can't memorise things because that's not learning because it doesn't create the connections you need, yeah? Even if you learn stuff, construct knowledge, your brain doesn't build those connections, yeah? it doesn't make those connections so that becomes long-term knowledge until you're sleeping. And the less sleep you get, the less your brain does that. So when somebody says that it's reasonable to not sleep and just to keep studying, they have a bias 
towards hard work being the way that things are achieved and they have a bias towards sleep being doing nothing. Sleep, it turns out, is important to learning. And there's a, there was another thing this expert said, and she was talking, this was the other expert, she was talking, I've forgotten the names, um, I'm not very good at names, but I will put the, the stuff underneath. She said, and we'll call her expert too, that specific, and, and I do see a, oh, it's nonsense that, but some people say teenagers uh, need more sleep, but uh, it's nonsense, it's just an old wives' tale. It turns out it's not nonsense. It turns out it's not nonsense. So when people like Justin Sun, is that his name, say that, you know, you, if you want to study more, you might have to go without sleep. That's not right. Now, what he tries to do is refer to himself as doctor in order to make anything that he says seem an expert view. Doctor of what? Not the, of education and certainly not in connection with researching sleep. Just because somebody's a medical doctor doesn't mean they're an expert on everything. I have spoken to medical doctors about language acquisition and they seem unbelievably misguided and full of biases, which is something that Dr. Megan Figueroa said in, uh, in one of her papers. She is an expert on language acquisition. Now, Back to what this expert said. They said that teenagers need more sleep and that there is an epidemic in the world yeah, of depression and suicide among teenagers. And that one of the reasons for this was this high stress, high stakes, exams at all cost type of studying where people got very little sleep or where people decided that they would go to school in the day and cram school in the evening. It is not good for you. You cannot just force more information in. You cannot. That is why memorising isn't learning. We have a complicated way of making connections in our brain. And memorising doesn't form part of making those long-term connections. If you want to make those long-term connections, you need to sleep. But you also need to sleep for your mental health. So it's very disappointing, very disappointing, that people are advising others to study and sleep less. To memorise and sleep less. There are all kinds of these biases that we have. But a major bias that most people have is towards hard work. And another one is towards feedback. There is very little evidence in research that tells us that being corrected. So I'll refer to the work now, whose name I've forgotten. Of a, a, I've spoken about him before, a, a professor in Germany who researched the effect of correction on writing. And what he found was that when you take a paper and you mark it, if the person writes the same paper again, yeah, they do it better. But if they write a different paper... It has no impact on their performance. And yet most people in most of our lives are convinced that corrective feedback will, will deliver. Take another example. Right, I have a young daughter and she is three years old and sometimes she wets the bed, yeah? Now your classic behaviourist explanation would be yeah, that you need to tell her. You need to tell her when she's done good and tell her when she's done bad. Now, you can do that lovingly or angrily, but it doesn't make a difference because that's not what the research says. 
The research says that she's not conscious of it. So it doesn't matter. You can give her all the feedback you like. And this is what this behaviorism does. It just ignores what's going on within and makes everything a case of corrective feedback or reinforcing feedback. And we have a bias towards those two things. These biases don't come from nowhere. These biases towards correction, you see it all the time where like there's study after study after study that proves that like being in harsh conditions in prison just does nothing to help people. And that harsh prison sentences don't do much for society, don't do anything for society. But we have a bias towards that. We have a bias towards punishment, we have a bias towards correction, and we have a bias towards hard work. Because that's how our society is structured. Because if somebody has a mental health issue, the first people they send to the police, not an expert to talk to them, the police, why? To correct them. It doesn't help. So when, when we approach things like study, it does well, it does well to think about how we best learn and to think about how we best learn critically. Because a lot of people on YouTube, yeah, they're not so bothered about helping people learn. And I see this in the comments when I receive people say, well, OK, you put that clickbaity tag, so but it needs to make money. That's the only way you make money on YouTube. Their need to make money doesn't become before everybody else's need to understand how we learn. That is a ridiculous thing to say. Ludicrous thing to say. We must call this out. Because as I have said before, challenging these biases is a slow process. Change doesn't come without any effort. It will come instantly, but it'll come instantly, like we've said before, dialectically, so that, you know, we check one at a time, one at a time, we learn to be a bit more critical of this common sense nonsense, yeah? And eventually when enough people have done that, whoo, you get a change. And that's how changes work. So every time they just pander to everyone's biases because that's what brings in the money. They're slowing down that change. Common sense is just availability bias. Dressed up as wisdom or Merlin, if you like. That's James, future multilingual. Happy New Year. See you soon.